everybody, welcome to Beyond the Scale podcast. I'm Coach Brittany, and today's special guest is not only a former pro wrestler, but he also owns three of his own Fit Body Bootcamp locations in California, and he's had his own transformation with uh, fitness and uses that to help inspire his clients. So welcome, Dustin. Thank you, thank you. Happy to be here. I'm glad that you're on the show with us. So, I mean, first things first, you are a former pro wrestler. How did that happen? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Definitely an interesting that. story. Not many people can claim that, so that's something very unique about me. But uh, it was actually beginning back in high school. I met a buddy that was training to be a well, I shouldn't say training, but doing a bunch of backyard matches, which is the stuff you see on the news. You shouldn't be doing throwing your friends through drywall, <laughs> jumping off roofs. And so he's like, it's awesome, dude. My dad built me a ring. Come check it out. And at the time, I was very antisocial. I didn't talk to many people in high school. And he invited me out. He extended that olive branch. And uh, I just fell in love with it. And, you know, I watched it here and there. And uh, really, I just was you know, just completely taken by the whole concept of it, of just putting on these fun matches for people to watch, putting on this really exciting, you know, physical feat in the ring. And so for that reason, I started uh, exercising and then fully going to a professional school, getting trained and then going around the world and putting on matches. And uh, it was definitely an awesome time. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So have you ever struggled with weight in the past or has it always, was it just getting into wrestling that kept you in your fitness. Yeah, so it, it, going back to high school, that's when I was at my biggest. I was actually 260 pounds, uh, you know, in my senior year of high school. Uh, Antisocial, didn't go to prom, didn't play sports. Uh, a lot of people are surprised to hear that because these days I'm very outgoing and I love uh, physical activity. And so they're like, wow, what happened? And uh, really what it was, was that I was just having the worst diet possible. You know, I had fast food. When I got my keys to my car, I just wanted to drive out and go get the worst foods, candy bars, fast food, soda, worst diet possible. So it's no surprise I was gaining weight. And then lots of sitting around. You know, I watched TV. I would sit in class. I would play video games. So not spending a lot of time being active. And what do you know? I, I gained a lot of weight. So at my peak, I was 260 pounds. And then when I started exercising with my buddy who was training to be a professional wrestler, uh, I lost 30 pounds just from exercising alone. And that really kind of bit, the, that was the health bug that bit me at that point that made me want to give that gift to others because it affected me so much. I, I started seeing this transformation in the mirror. I start, stood a little taller. I had better posture. I had more confidence. I was more outgoing. So I thought, wow, this was such a big transformation for me. I would love to give this to other people as well. That's awesome. Now, were you doing any type of personal training or anything like that while you were wrestling or did all that come after your wrestling career? Yeah, so I actually did them to, at the same time. It was like my side hustle. Uh, wrestling was a halt, a weekend warrior sport. You know, I, I just wrestled on the weekends and didn't make a whole lot of money. Uh, when I was doing my personal training on the side, that's what was paying the bills. So that's where I really, uh, you know, was putting in my focus on the weekdays. And I got certified right out of high school um, because I saw that transformation in my senior year. And so I immediately started training people. I got a job at Gold's Gym. I started training people in their homes and uh, just really started, you know, chasing that side of uh, my career. And uh, so I was doing them at the same time, but my mind was always towards, I'm gonna be a professional wrestler one day, I'm gonna work for Vince McMahon, I'm gonna tour the world and be a professional wrestler. Um, and after about 11 years of putting in work, I kind of came to a fork in the road and kind of decided, hey, I'm going to step away from this. It's not panning out the way I saw it. It's not really, you know, where my goals lie anymore. Uh, I see myself being more in the fitness industry, and I really put my focus there instead. From there, was that when you first started opening your Fit Body Bootcamp locations, or um, did you do personal training? Pretty much at that point, I was training people in their homes. I was training people in my garage. I had built a little garage gym and I was building up a clientele following, if you will. And uh, I pretty much, when I walked away from wrestling, I got it in my mind that I wanted to open my own fitness facility, that I worked at other big box gyms. I didn't really like how they treated us. I really didn't like all the high pressure sales that they've had you, uh, you know, do with your clients or you had to walk on the floor and cold, you know, sell people. So I said, man, I really loved that my own gym. And so uh, I built up enough of a following that I was comfortable taking the risk and going and opening it. And so the first gym I opened uh, was a small facility. It was only 1,200 square feet. Uh, I actually opened, or 1,200 square feet. I actually opened it with my brother. And uh, that was the, the whole kickoff to me being a, a fitness business owner. Going back to nutrition, you said that, you know, you used to drive to fast food places, eat candy bars and everything. 
once you got on your fitness journey through wrestling and personal training and finding that passion in it, did your nutrition change at all or? Yeah, I, I definitely lost weight just from exercising, but I eventually hit a wall and I stopped seeing changes and I decided to just really take a deeper dive into the nutrition because I, I was young, you know, when you're younger, you can just exercise and you'll lose weight. But uh, I knew I was still eating the wrong types of foods because of how they made me feel. I was still eating, you know, fast food, you know, uh, candy bars, all kinds of just terrible things. And I would just always have the worst stomach pains and just all these side effects. And I knew, all right, what my body's telling me, you're not eating the right things. So I decided to really dive more into the nutrition side of things and learn about that. And when I started applying the principles I learned, I started implementing healthier changes. Uh, what do you know? I lose another 30 pounds. And so from that, I was down a total of 60 pounds. So at my peak, I was 260 pounds. Today, I'm around 200, 205. So I lost 60 pounds of fat from doing a combination of exercise and eating the right foods. And now eating the right foods, were you on a particular diet or is it just eating healthy and... Yeah, you Besides. know, I, when I look back at it, I can't even put a label on it. I just knew I needed more vegetables, I needed to drink more water, I needed to cut out the sugar and all the bad foods I was eating. So, I, yeah, there, there's no real label to the, to the diet. It was just like the, yeah, eat better diet. And so, uh, as a result, I just cleaned out all the bad stuff I was putting in and put in more good stuff. Okay, awesome. Now, what do you think one of the biggest things that is that keeps you know, clients from staying on their fitness journey. What, what's one of the big things that makes them fall off track? Yeah, I, I would say that um, a lot of just short term thinking like, you know, I can completely transform my body in 30 days or I'm just going to put in two months of just hard work and then I'm going to be shredded and ripped and beach ready and not a lot enough long term thinking. So I would just want to really and I already do educate people to to make that shift to go from like, hey, don't think of a short term fix, a band aid fix. Think long term. What's the game plan two years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now? You have to be thinking about that because if you don't attack those problems, those problems will attack you. So you got to always be, you know, preemptive. Think of a plan and, and pretty much think longer term. Uh, I would say that that's the big thing that I try to solve that people struggle with. And now I'm sure. So you own your own Fit Body Boot Camp locations. Um, you deal with a lot of women. What what is something that you see a lot of women come in with that? Um, just really affects them mentally and their fitness game and how do you get them to change that mindset around and really see the value in their fitness. And sure, sure. I'd say the big thing that they struggle with is comparison. You know, uh, a lot of women see how another uh, woman weighs and they want to weigh the same or the, their favorite celebrity or fitness model and they say they weigh that much, I should weigh that much. But we're all unique, you know. I'm sure everybody's seen that uh, image where they line up six or seven women that all weigh 140 pounds and they all look very different. Some are tall and slender, some are short and stockier. And uh, you know, a lot of people can get focused on a number. I need to weigh a certain number or I need to get back to this certain number. So I see that really do a lot of damage to people's mindset, especially women. And so uh, what I really try to coach them on is think more about your body composition more than your weight. What is your body composed of? You know, how much of it is bones and fat and muscle and water and those types of things uh, rather than what is the scale telling you. Now you yourself, have you experienced any setbacks along the way, um, you know, since you got into fitness that you can talk about? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm human. I think everybody has a setback. And, uh, you know, a lot of times it's stuff that, um, you know, is unexpected. You know, I get sick or I get super busy at work. Like I didn't plan for these things to happen, but I just have non-negotiables always in place. I got to get to the gym or do some sort of physical activity at least three days a week. Um, two of my meals guaranteed will always be healthy. I'll never let a whole day go to waste where I eat really bad the entire day. If I do slip up and I have one bad meal, that's it for the day. I can't do any others. So there's just principles that I live by that have really helped me. So yeah, I'm human. I have setbacks and I always come out the other end overcoming them because I'm thinking the long term game. I'm not thinking short term. So definitely having those standards in your life. And like you said, those non-negotiables, I, I really like that idea. Yeah. Um, now, so you were that pro wrestler, 11 years going strong on that, doing you wanted to, you know, work for Vince McMahon, be all in that pro 
arena. Yeah. I know personal training was your side job. So how, what, what was it that made you officially leave the wrestling world to go full force into opening your businesses? Sure, sure. I mean, there was quite a few things, but I'd say the big major factor was just, uh, I was coming to a, a fork in the road in my life. You know, I was getting married. Um, I, I always gave myself a deadline that if I don't make it to a certain place in wrestling by the age of 28, then I was gonna kind of step away. And so I invested that time. I was coming close to that time. And uh, also a lot of the people I enjoyed going to shows with and being involved with were all also stepping away. So it was kind of losing, you know, the fun in it when you're kind of thinking about, man, I'm going to be going to this show alone. I'm going to be on a plane alone. I'm going to be in a hotel room, a hotel room alone. And so I just kind of just took a hard look at it and said, is this really what I want to do with these new things in front of me? And so I just chose not to, that I really kept feeling this calling to, to, to always go back to fitness. You know, it really felt like when I was in the wrestling industry, I was just hitting obstacle after obstacle, wall after wall, and I wasn't really getting anywhere. And then whenever I invested more time and energy into fitness, just door after door started opening. So it was kind of easy for me to make that decision when I saw that momentum shift happening. And that was just, I'm assuming, you know, the path you're meant to be on, because I mean, you've helped so many lives already and you continue to do that. Um, I think that's a really awesome quality that you have. Um, now, as far as opening your first gym, I, it had to be hard to get out of, uh, you know, the wrestling industry and then doing your personal training on the side. I mean, doing one-on-one, -on -one, was it one-on-one -on -one personal training you used to do? Yeah, it was. And so I'm assuming, you know, you didn't make as much as you wanted. How did you set your goals in order to really you know, make your dream happen and, and open your locations. Yeah, so I mean, it, trust me, it was fun. Me and my brother, we were known as the Cutler Brothers. We wanted to be these evil personal trainers. We'd throw protein powder in the in our opponent's eyes. We would choke them with <laughs> resistance bands. Uh, we had a lot of fun and, you know, I did take my love for fitness and, and put a spin on it with our, our wrestling uh, characters. But I, I think what really made me choose to set goals to get b the ability to open my fitness facility was seeing how quickly I was growing with my clients that I was training in my garage and also training in their home. It seemed like every client I gained, they would refer to others and they were just duplicating quickly. And I thought, wow, you know, like this is something I'm good at. This is something that I can really see myself doing as a career and I enjoy it. I mean, I had been doing it again, simultaneously my wrestling career. I, I was certified since 2004. So here we are rolling out over 13 years in the fitness industry, um, you know, off and on all the way up to today. So uh, it really just got me excited seeing that growth and it really just always called to me as something that I'm very passionate about. I love helping people and that it would be a, uh, a good choice for me to put all my time and energy into there. So it, it was pretty much that that caused me to go that direction. Okay, nice. Now I'm just curious, so what type of fitness do you need to be a pro wrestler? Yeah, it's a lot of body weight training, you know, because that's what you're using in the ring. I mean, you do need to be able to lift weights because you're picking up other guys and slamming them down. But it's a combination of just mastering your body weight, being able to shift around in the ring, quick cuts. So we would be doing a lot of conditioning, a lot of uh, body weight movements, push-ups, rolls, all those types of things. So it, it's definitely exhausting. And I mean, they go for hours doing wrestling training. So they are definitely some of the toughest guys I've ever met. Uh, there's so many horror stories of people going to wrestling school the first time they hit the ropes and they have these red marks all on their back because it's truthfully cable wire wrapped with hose and then, you know, some tape. Oh, so wow, it's it's that. tough stuff. And then they'll get slammed on the ring and their back will be red and, and bruised and people would think that somebody jumped them in an alleyway. <laughs> but in all reality, the ring is a small thing of foam, you know, maybe an inch thick and below that is metal and wood. So you're you're getting slammed down on some hard things. So a lot of people think, oh man, it's like a trampoline, it's soft, they must be just acting like, no, it really, really does hurt. And there's no way to fake getting hit by a chair or getting slammed through a table. Like you're literally taking that stuff. You're just working with that person to put on a show for the audience, you know? So yeah, it's definitely a very rigorous uh, physical activity to be ready for that type of training. Yeah, it sounds pretty violent. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to training types, I mean, what would you say the pros and cons are for training a one-on-one -on -one versus group training? Yeah, so when I was doing one-on-one, -on -one, uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, uh, I was doing one-on-many. 
uh, soon after, but I knew that I liked that training, group training better, because when I did one-on-one, -on -one, so much depended on who that person was. Did I click with them? Can we have a conversation? Are they coachable? And if that person was a joy and we're gonna laugh and they're really easy to work with and they'll listen to my instructions, um, it was gonna be a great hour. But if that person just did not talk or they were you know, a complainer or they just didn't see eye to eye with me and it felt like we were constantly having friction, the hour dragged on, it felt like two hours. So I knew that uh, I get more joy working in groups. Uh, I'm definitely like a group person, I, I'm high energy, I like being in groups. And so that attracted me. And so once I started doing it, I immediately knew, bam, I'm done with one-on-one -on -one training. This is for me now. And you know, when we are looking to bring team members onto our team for our locations, that's one of the things we look for. We say, hey, do you enjoy group training or do you like one-on-one -on -one training? And so I listened to that because if they like group training, then that means they're a good fit for us. Okay. And now in regards to wrestling, is there anything that you've taken, that you've been able to take from there to apply to you training your clients and helping them? Oh yeah, I mean, there's the whole showmanship aspect. You know, I tell the the, the co our coaches that you guys are, you know, putting on a show. Don't make any mistake about it. It's not just a workout. It's not just some reps. The music's got to be awesome. You got to have a lot of, you know, hand gestures, facial expressions. You know, moving your hands constantly, marching around the room, no stopping. Hands on with the client. So there's that whole showmanship that I learned, which is huge. And then we implement it with how we celebrate our clients too. You know, most people who would get a referral from a client might hand them a standard size check. I went and got the biggest, most blown up check I could find because that's what we would do in wrestling. We would need to get something big the whole audience can see in the entire arena. So uh, a lot of those lessons that I learned, but you know, it really would co always come back to showmanship. And then the other big one, of course, from the godfather of wrestling, Hulk Hogan, uh, he always had a message. And so I know that I have a message that I want to share with the world, a, a fitness message that I want to you know, uh, help everybody with. So he would always end his videos or his promos with, you know, you got to train hard, say your prayers, take your vitamins. Um, so that always helped me to think, okay, hey, I have to have a message, something, something that everything I do, I tie it into so that I have a message that me and my team are all working towards to deliver to the world. All right, so a lot of our listeners might be thinking, you know, of course you're in shape, you're used to be a pro wrestler. What is something that you can tell them or relate to them to let them know that, you know, they can get in shape too? Sure, so I mean, a lot of times people are in the best shape of their life when they're in high school. I was the opposite, I was 260 pounds. That was when I was in the least, you know, best shape. So if people are trying to get you know, back into shape and, and they're wondering, you know, how did I do it? It's just through those two things that I use, exercise and nutrition. That's always gonna be the answer. A lot of times people are looking for a shortcut, like a pill you can just pop every day and you'll lose weight or some sort of quick surgery or some sort of injection that's just gonna melt the weight off your body. But none of those things are gonna work. It'll always be exercise and nutrition forever and ever. That will be the way that we really get our bodies in shape. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, could think that like, hey, you were just super active. You had this, you know, physical activity you like to do the sport. Um, that's how you got in shape. But that's what boot camp is. Boot camp is a sport for many people. You know, a lot of people use boot camp to be able to go do a mud run or to look great for a big event. And that's just the sport that they use. You don't have to play, um, you know, team sports like a basketball or football or pro wrestling in my case. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think fitness definitely helps you, you know, really shape and transform your whole life full circle. Like you mentioned before, uh, you didn't go to prom. Like, I mean, that is a big thing that, you know, a lot of people want to participate in, but you said you didn't go to prom, um, you know, you struggled with being outgoing in high school, and now, like, you're this outgoing person that totally helps your clients, connects with them, and, you know, you're a very active person. So would you say that fitness definitely has a big role in changing your life and your mindset and you know, yeah, absolutely. You. you know, I even think, what if that streak continued? What if I didn't get in shape? Then I would have got, you know, maybe a job I didn't like so much. And then I would have never met my wife. And, you know, like, think about the opposite version of Dustin today. If he didn't find that, if he didn't get in shape, how different would his life be? So that's the thing that I really want our, my clients and everybody in the world to think about is how much better could your life be if you were healthy and happy and confident? You know, that's the best gift you can give yourself is the best gift you can give your family and your loved ones. 
So I think that that's kind of a mindset you, you should operate from is not just, you know, thinking about like, hey, uh, I, want, I don't want to do this because, you know, maybe the time investment or the, the money investment, um, it's going to take a lot from me as far as resources. But hey, how much are you going to get back? If you're going to get tenfold back, if you're going to get tenfold more time in the, in the time of your life where you can add decades to the, you know, tail end of your life. And then, you know, hey, how about money? You're saving yourself the insurance costs or the, you know, the cost of medication or all those things that you have to spend money on when you have a sickly body. Um, I really think it's worth every single penny. How important do you think it is to have a really strong support system when you're trying to, you know, get to your fitness goals and live that healthy life? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the reasons I think Fit Body Bootcamp is so successful, and that is the community aspect, that we really bring a lot of people together that have the same goals in mind, the same struggles, so that they can connect and talk about it and work together through it. You know, I think uh, anybody that's going through any type of issue, it's always going to be solved best by really talking to another person, whether it's a mentor, a coach, a friend, a family, a coworker. Uh, if you can talk something out, if you can kind of just figure things out together, uh, have a sounding board by you, you'll always get through it a lot easier, less friction, and a lot faster than you would if you try to figure it out on your own. We're, we are, you know, uh, tribal creatures. We're meant to be together and to work together to solve problems. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of people, um, it's like you said, being around those like-minded people in the gym, because a lot of people don't have that support anywhere else, or if you know they've been unhealthy their whole life and they try to start, a lot of people may be putting them down or telling them they can't do it. So I love that Fit Body Bootcamp does have that culture and community within, and like you said, finding mentors and coaches. I mean, we all need mentors and coaches in our life on all different aspects uh, to be the best versions of ourselves. So absolutely, yeah, I love that. What what makes you feel unstoppable? You have three locations. You uh, you do sales. You you know have the whole family at home. Sure. What keeps you going, and what makes you feel unstoppable? I mean, for me right now, I'm at a point where I'm addicted to growth. Like, I, I just have so much fun seeing, you know, new things, seeing uh, or experiencing new things, and really just having so much fun uh, every day that I wake up. Because I've had the jobs. I, I mean, I worked most of my life, um, you know, at a big box gym, or I was a fitness director at a retirement community. I had to get up early, I had to do those things, and that was fine. But when I really started, getting excited was when I was helping my clients to get to their goals, when I just woke up with a purpose of servitude. I, I think of it as being a servant leader, that I wake up and the first thing on my mind is how can I help other people? Because we've heard that you know uh, people get selfishly fulfilled when they help somebody else. It's the best blessing you can give yourself is to bless somebody else. So that is something that I'm addicted to, is that growth of like, man, how big of an impact can I make? Really, how far are my limits? Let me see how far I can take this. And so right now, I've set a couple of crazy goals for myself. Uh, I mean, they're crazy for most people, but for me, I think that it's things that everybody can attain if they set their mind to it. So the first one is that I have a goal to live to 100 years old. I mean, most people don't even think about that or plan it out in advance, but I want to hit triple digits, baby. 100 yeah. years old, here I come. <laughs> and if I don't make it, those that are alive are the only ones that'll know because I won't <laughs> know. I'll be gone. Uh, but the second one is I really, really want to make a big impact here in Southern in California, it's where I was born, it was where I'm raised, it's where I, I see a big need for people to get healthy and fit. Um, you know, a lot of people think of Southern California, oh, everybody's just ripped and shirtless and surfing and they're on the beach. But there, there are plenty of people that need help with their health and fitness. I mean, right now we are losing the war against obesity. You right. know, uh, it's definitely at all time high numbers. So we're, we're not making a dent in how many people need help. So my mission there is to help a million residents of Southern California to get healthy and fit um, you know, by the end of my lifetime, which would be 100 years old if I have it my way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what would you say one of your biggest accomplishments is? Man, I mean, right now there's just so many things that, you know, I'm marking off my bucket list. It feels really good. Um, but the big thing I would say that is my biggest accomplishment is being able to find a work-life balance because, you know, I'm very hard charging. I'm a type A. I'm constantly moving forward to the next thing. So now that I've you know, and I can't say now that I have kids because they're three and five, so they've been around a while, but now that they're at an age where I can really connect with them, we have conversations, you know, that they're fun to be around, they're not just babies that need to have their diapers changed, um, it, it's really become important to me. And I think I see this a lot of, you know, many of my friends that, you know, have busy lives and then they end up 
being forced to have to slow down when they have kids because it's like, hey, this is only a short period of time. You know, when these kids are 12, 15, 18 years old, they don't want mom and dad anymore. They're too cool for school. So you get a very small slice of time there to really enjoy it because when they become adults, they're adults forever. So I think that that really forced me to say like, hey, work is, you know, fulfilling, it's your passion, but don't forget to make time for this because it'll be gone before you know it. And you know, that's I think the number one piece of advice every parent has uh, passed down to me and it's not definitely not falling on deaf ears. I really do my best to make time for that. So I'd say that's probably my biggest accomplishment, you know. I think that's beautiful. That's a beautiful message to share with everyone because it's true. I mean, kids grow up so fast and you lose that time. It's like out the window before you know it. Okay, so if you could speak to your high school self, what is the piece of advice that you would give yourself? Man, looking back, I, I don't have any regrets. I enjoyed my time in the wrestling industry. I enjoyed, you know, my whole journey from there till now. But if there's one thing I could go back and change and tell that, you know, Dustin at 17 years old is to possibly even focus on the fitness uh, industry sooner because that's the only thing I would say is that, you know, I, I kind of only gave it half effort for the first half of my fitness career. And sometimes I think back, wow, what if I just went full effort from day one? Where would I be today? So again, I don't live with regrets because I really appreciate everything that I've done and I accomplished, but that would be the only thing I'd go back and, you know, whisper in his ear. I mean, at the same time, though, even though going through all your wrestling, I think that definitely plays a big part in, you know, how successful you are now and bringing some of that to the table um, in your businesses nowadays. So finally, last question here. What does living beyond the scale mean to you? Great question. So actually, at our locations, we're big fans of something we call NSVs or non-scale victories, and we celebrate them the same or even more than scale victories. Because most people think of their success of their fitness program on what the scale says. And I've just seen it too many times where uh, a, a woman will walk in and be up, upbeat and excited and like, all right, I've been doing it. I've been coming to Fit Body Boot Camp for two or three weeks. Let's see what we've uh, accomplished. And they step on the scale and a pound is dropped or no weight or three pounds at the most and the waterworks begin. They start crying, they start beating themselves up. Why do you do this to yourself? You'll never be in shape. All the bad self-talk begins to come in. And what they fail to realize is, hey, it, this is a very short period of time. You know, you've spent years causing your body to gain weight. So to think you're gonna reverse it in two weeks was probably a little, you know, uh, too strong of a goal. So you need to give it more time, it'll happen. You know, and people do lose weight. It's just every, there's no crystal ball to see when it will happen for you. So that's why we decided to implement non-scale victories. And that's where we celebrate everything that has nothing to do with the scale. You know, it could be, this is the best sleep I'm getting in my life, or I am able to wear my w wedding ring. I haven't been able to put that on for the last two years, or that dress that's hiding in the back of my closet, it now fits, you know? So these are all little things, you know, I I'm less irritable, I I'm more productive at work, you know, I I've been more consistent with exercise. Usually I can only stick with it two weeks. I've been doing this for eight weeks now. So these are all little things that to the naked eye, people kind of just push aside and say, oh, whatever. But we say, hey, stop for a moment, celebrate that. That's just as good to me as losing a pound or half a pound that these things are happening for you, that you are wearing your wedding ring again, you are wearing that favorite dress. So we really uh, pump up our clients to share their NSVs and it's the whole thing at our locations that they post hashtag NSV or NSV of the day and they'll post them in there and they're it's crazy they're more proud of those now than they are of their weight loss and I'm really proud to have built that because I just saw that was the biggest biggest problem with people and the scale so for me living beyond the scale means to celebrate your NSVs your non-scale victories I love that NSVs I, I've never heard of that before but I'm definitely going to take that with me and I know personally for myself before you know working out and getting better with my health I lived a very unhealthy life and I was young but I felt like I was getting old really fast. I felt sick all the time and it just wasn't good. Once I got on my fitness journey and you know started eating healthier, working out more routinely, I feel so much younger. I mean I still am young but I feel 10 times younger than I did before so I truly believe in that. Also another thing is I think people forget to remember that on the scale if you lose a pound of fat and a pound of muscle that looks completely different than absolutely so you could still be the same weight but look a lot thinner mm -hmm. and um, i think that's a great thing for our listeners to take home all right well that should wrap it up for today if you would like to burn fat and lose weight like never before 
please feel free to check out our Fit Body Boot Camp locations on fitbodybootcamp.com. Um, if you're in Southern California, Dustin, what are your locations? Yeah, check us out. We would love to help you. We'd love to help you practice safe sets. That's what I'm all about. Uh, and so our locations here in Southern California are going to be in Victorville, Ontario, Monrovia, and Altaloma. So uh, definitely reach out if we are near you. And for those of you that aren't in the Southern California area or by any of Dustin's locations, again, just visit fitbodybootcamp.com to find your local location and also claim your three free workouts. Thank you for watching Beyond the Scale. We drop a hot new episode every Tuesday. Make sure you check out our social media pages. Give us a like, subscribe, share a video. You can even give us a hug if you see us in person. Until then, fit body, fit mind forever.